ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Stanley Director Show. My guest, Johnny Brown, is one of the most versatile personalities around. You've seen him on Good Times, on Laugh-In. His talents include singing, mimicry, comedy, dancing, acting, songwriting, and screen and television writing. Johnny made his Broadway acting debut with Sammy Davis Jr. in Golden Boy. He began his career as a nightclub singer and recording artist for Columbia and Atlantic Records. A few years back, he appeared on the stage again with Jennifer Holliday in the hit musical The Gospel Truth. He went on to win the coveted NAACP Theater Award for Best Actor. Johnny Brown, I ask you, where did you get all of this talent? And would you mind spreading some this way over here, huh? I don't know. Well, everything gets well here. <laughs> I have to tell you, I lost a son. I lost a son. <laughs> I don't know. I, I guessed um, I was just blessed. I, when I was small, I think I, you know, most kids say they don't know what they want to do. I think when I was small, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was in school, I was always in the plays because I had a big mouth. I could enunciate. You could hear me all over, <laughs> all over, all over the auditorium. Uh, I could always sing. And I never really remember being an amateur. Mm -hmm. And I guess, and that as the years went by, things, you know, being around certain uh, venues, you pick up things, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, you don't go to school for them. I, I choose, I never studied voice until I was, oh, about 19 or 20 years old. And then I started studying classical music. Mm -hmm. But uh, everything else was on the job training. Uh -huh. Like when I did my first Broadway show, I had never gone to a Broadway show. I had never seen a Broadway show. Mm -hmm. I was aware of Broadway, but I had no aspirations of being in a Broadway show. Um, but I had good timing from my nightclub experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as the years would go by, like when I, when I was a singer, a young kid, a singer in a band, mm -hmm. I used to stand and watch the drummer. Uh -huh. Every night I would stand in and watch the drummer and I said, I can do that. Uh -huh. I can do that. So the first time I had a chance to sit on the drums, I had all the coordination uh -huh. together because I had watched. But uh, back in those days, you learn by watching, mm -hmm. basically by watching. Mm -hmm. You maybe took, I mean, it's like dancers. Years ago when Sammy Davis was a dancer, they watched uh -huh. because Sammy had no uh, uh, education as far as academics or anything like mm -hmm. that. He, I mean, when other kids were in school, he was dancing, right, you know? Right, right. And you... Being around the stage, uh -huh. backstage in the wings, you watch and you learn. And that's how mm -hmm. you, over the years, you pick up things. So it's not, because I used to always tell kids, show business is not like going to college. Uh -huh. I mean, there's no graduation, there's no placement. <laughs> you know, like being in a law firm or something right, like right, that. It's right. all whatever you can learn, whatever you can pick mm -hmm. up along the mm -hmm. way. So I think everything that I've, I've done in the business, I've been fortunate enough to, to uh, do it well and just focus. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do, I think you must focus on. You know, whether you're playing basketball or baseball, when you're standing up there to hit that ball, you got to focus. Yeah, but I mean, you know? doing a Broadway show with somebody who is a giant like Sammy Davis Jr., I, didn't that intimidate you at all in any way? No, I guess maybe it should have. Mm. But when you're young, you're crazy anyway. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> you're going to try anything. I guess it should have. I must tell you this. I mean, the whole time I worked with him, I was in awe of him. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had a 30-year relationship with Sammy Davis. I met him in 1961, mm -hmm. 1964. I did my first Broadway show with him. 65, I did my first film with him. Uh, and I must say, I guess he was an inspiration. Mm -hmm. He was an inspiration, and I was aware of Sammy Davis. And uh, I guess at that time, he was an idol. I never thought about it. Mm -hmm. In retrospect, you know, I said, well, I guess Sammy was my idol because he did all the things that I wanted to do. I wanted to be the well-rounded, complete entertainer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't just want to sing or tell a uh -huh. joke right. because uh, myself, when I sit in an audience and a performer walks on stage and he tells a joke, and in my mind I'm saying, what else can he do? <laughs> you know, if it's a singer, I want to know what else can they do? A dancer, what else can they do? And so consequently, this was my aim to be the well-rounded performer mm -hmm. watching Sammy. And during the years that I used to work in the Catskills, 
Oh, you worked the boys. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Right, with right, all my right. mishpacha out there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I had to learn to do a lot of different things because during the summer months, they used to have a singer, a comedian, and a, a dance, a dance right, act. Right, right. Now, in the winter, uh, the hotels that open in the winter, mm -hmm. they had less people. You know, uh -huh. they had a smaller yeah. population. Right. So they needed a performer that could come in and do an hour, but could be versatile. Mm -hmm. So fortunately, it kept me working because I could dance, I could sing, I could tell jokes and do impressions. <laughs> so they had three acts in one, you right, know, right. so it kept me busy, kept me working. But I've just been very fortunate enough to, uh, I guess, to dispel the myth that people are nothing or they can't do. Mm -hmm. Because I honestly believe if you put your mind to it, you can do anything you want to. Yeah, but I mean, you but must. But you got to make that first step. True, but I mean, did you? Who inspired you when you were a little kid? If, if before this happened, Sammy, yeah, I have no idea. I really don't know where it came mm -hmm. about. I, I mean, even as I sit here and I think, and I'm trying to answer the question, until Sammy, which was later on, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know why I wanted to sing. I don't know how I knew how to sing. Mm -hmm. Those things I have no idea because. Uh, at that time, there was nobody in my family, my immediate family, that was in the business. Uh -huh. I mean, I found out years later that there were people in the business, that, you know, not of any significance. Uh -huh. But um, I, ha I have no answer. I mean, I am really floored right now when you ask me a, a question like that. I really can't answer because I don't know where it started. Right. I remember as a kid taking a cigar box uh -huh. and a ruler yeah. and, and cutting a hole and putting rubber bands on it to make like a little guitar. Is that right? Yeah. And it had no melody. It was uh -huh. rubber bands. Uh -huh. But I still use it to sing and uh -huh. to prepare myself for working in front of a microphone. Mm -hmm. And like I said, um, I don't know where it came from because nobody in, in my family was in the business. Maybe it's something that you have to it say. Just, well, well yeah. you got to say it's got to be a blessing from God, mm -hmm. you know, because I yeah. feel like that God blesses everybody, gives everybody a talent. Mm -hmm. I mean, why would he love me any more than you that he would give me something? Mm -hmm. So everybody has a talent, whether they use it or not. Uh -huh. You know, it's ridiculous yeah. to live on this earth uh -huh. and to die and not do anything. And yeah. everybody's given a talent. So... I guess that was mine, you know. I wanted to play basketball, you know. Uh huh. But uh, well, you were a boxer too. Yeah, I boxed, you know. I boxed, yeah. Thank God you gave it up. Yeah. Right? Well, my mother didn't want me to do it, you uh -huh. know. And then the political aspects of boxing, I didn't want any parts of. So mm -hmm. I said, well, I'll go with the show business. Yeah. Well, what what drew you out to uh, L.A.? I came out to Los Angeles in '69 to do a film that Neil Simon wanted me to do a part in a movie, uh, The Outer Towners. Oh, yeah, And it was sure. a small part. It was a way uh -huh. down the train, but he wanted me uh -huh. to do it. And I came out, and I stayed here just for one week. Mm -hmm. And with a week's time, I found an agent. Mm -hmm. I had a meeting with Ethel Winant, who was the head of casting at CBS at that time. Right. And by the time I got back to New York, I had a series. Mm. You know? And just one thing led to the other, you know? So you gave up the uh, pace of Manhattan? Yeah, and I gave up. Hubbub, hubbub, well, hubbub, hubbub, hubbub. I fell in love with the weather. First of all, I found paradise. I said, cheers. I, said, I found a place where flowers <laughs> grow 365 days a year, beautiful right. flowers and grass. Uh -huh. And that's what happened, you know? Well, that's you're very fortunate uh, uh, that it happened that way. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Many yeah. people, they kind of come out here. Just, and nothing uh, happened, yeah. Nothing but I've been happened. fortunate. I came out and I did... And within uh, uh, an amount of time, I, I was a regular on five television series. Hmm. I was on the Leslie Adams show at CBS, mm -hmm. and that was dropped, and I went back to New York, and by the time I got back to New York, uh, the laughing people called me, mm -hmm. which Sammy Davis, once again, my surrogate father, uh -huh. and my friend, and my mentor, right. uh, I was one of Sammy's protégés, along with... Uh, Lola Falana, the first lady of Las Vegas, right, and a very talented choreographer who we lost a couple of years ago by the name of Lester Wilson. Uh -huh. We were three of Sammy's protégés, and um, Sammy was the type of person to just pick up a telephone. He didn't tell you what he was going to do. Mm -hmm. He didn't brag about it. He didn't boast that I did this for you. He did it. Right. And at the end of the '69 season. I get a call to do the show Laugh-In. Mm -hmm. Now, I never find out that a year later that Sammy was responsible for it. 
Oh, really? Yeah, he okay. had dinner with Rona Martin, mm -hmm. and at that particular time, they said we were looking for new faces, and Sammy, without batting an eye, said, get Johnny Brown. That's the way it happened. I, Johnny <laughs> Brown, I, I, you have such a diversified career. Let me ask you a simple thing. Who's your favorite actor? Oh, my goodness. This, well, I, there's so many actors that I like. Mm -hmm. And the reason I like so many actors is because different actors have different styles. That's mm -hmm. why when you say the best actor, that is something that is hard for me to get with because mm -hmm. everybody has a different style. Right. It's like you say, who's, who's the greatest mm -hmm. catcher or the greatest basketball player? Everybody has a different style. Mm -hmm. But I would, one of my favorite actors, I would have to say, it was Clint Eastwood. Oh, really? Yeah, Clint Eastwood. I met, I met Clint Eastwood. As a matter of fact, I met him at Sammy's house. Mm -hmm. And I've seen all his pictures, and there's just something about his acting that I happen to like. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm thinking about writing him a letter and saying, listen, I'm your oldest fan. I'm getting <laughs> older, and nobody sent me out for your pictures. You've got to put me in one of your pictures before I get too old. But I would love working with Clint Eastwood. Well, you know, that brings me to another question, which I want to ask you. If you had the opportunity to play a particular part, a, a role, we'll say, that has already been performed on the screen, which part would you have liked to have played? This is, now, I got an answer for that. I, okay. And this is going to blow you away. I would love to do a remake of The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Hey. I would love to do that, the part that um, uh, Charles, Lawton? Charles Lawton played. Sure. Yeah. I would love to do that. I would, that type of role, because of the fact that I'm a character actor, I'm uh -huh. not your matinee idol, uh -huh. and character actors have to be very careful about the parts they choose or, uh -huh. you know, about a part that can, can catapult them into stardom. Right. That's the type of role that could do it. I think right. to update that, I thought of it either as a musical mm -hmm. and uh, at one time... Uh, that is a wonderful the, idea. A, it is, it is. Because it hasn't been done, uh -huh. and there are so many aspects uh, to do that you can update it, mm -hmm. update it. But that's, I think, that's one of the roles I would love to do. All right, I, because because it's it's a lovable role. Mm -hmm. I mean, the guy was so hideous, mm -hmm. but there was something in his heart, right? You know, that certain people weren't afraid of him, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's 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 a role I would love to do. I would well, love to do an update on that. Well, going along that vein, I know you're also a writer. I won't hold it against you. <laughs> but what, do, are you a comedy writer? Well, I'll tell you how the writing came about. I uh, was on a show called Good Times, which I was on, oh. a regular on it for three seasons. Mm -hmm. And after the show, after the demise of the show, there was nobody knocking down any doors for Johnny Brown's uh, talents or for my work. And I said, well, she was, you know, if they're not coming to me, you know, I got to go to them. Mm -hmm. So I started writing. I started writing. And, of course, my writing was horrendous, <laughs> you know. But I kept at it. It's something mm -hmm. that I didn't stop because I was determined to write at least one good screenplay, mm -hmm. at least one good sitcom, right. at least one good stage play. I was determined. I said, I'm not a give up type person. Mm -hmm. I will never give up. I will <laughs> never give up. As long as I'm right. on this earth, I will keep going. I don't right. believe in giving up because I feel yeah. the day that you give up, there may be your big break. Right. And I honestly right. believe right. that. And not only that, as long as you keep doing something, you can only get better at it. Mm -hmm. What an optimist you are. Uh, yes. You are the optimist of I, You optimist. know something? I am. I uh -huh. Against all odds. And I'll tell you why. It's, and it's because of my, my spiritual background, my belief mm -hmm. in God. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the thing that carries me on uh -huh. because I believe that God has the power. You know, mm -hmm. the humans that run everything down here, they're just right. a, a, a small part of God's plans. Mm -hmm. And in believing this, I believe there's nothing I can't do. Mm -hmm. And I believe that no humans can stop me. Mm -hmm. And I feel that all I have to do uh, against all obstacles is to write a great screenplay mm -hmm. not a good screenplay mm -hmm. a great screenplay okay. all i have to do is write a great song mm -hmm. or a great stage play or a great sitcom mm -hmm. and i feel with a pencil and paper and some uh, the intelligence that i have uh -huh. i just have to hit on the right one mm -hmm. it's the same thing with the established people mm -hmm. the established singer still has to have that hit song 
True. He can True. go on and on, even with his status, he still has to have that hit song. Spielberg still has to have that, that movie. Right. You know? He, he has to have the script. Absolutely. He has to have the script, mm -hmm. you know? So my thing is, mentally, I'm on that level. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I don't say that to be boastful or, or, or cocky, mm -hmm. but people can misconstrue cockiness and confidence, and that has happened so many times. So I try very hard to balance that scale, mm -hmm. because if that scale tilts, that confidence becomes cockiness. Mm -hmm. If it tilts the other way, that, that, that calmness and that niceness becomes subservient. Mm -hmm. And people resent that. So you got it's a scale you have to balance in life. It's a disciplinary thing yeah. that you have to do with yourself. But it seems like there's so many injustices uh, in the world, particularly in show business, you might say. I, I mean, understand that. I understand that. But, and not to, not to go off on a tangent of, of, of religion or, or stuff like that, but I still say I believe in putting God first. Uh -huh. And that, that works for me. Okay. It works for me. I'm not right. trying to bring anybody into, you know. I, I understand that. But yeah. I, I. And I, that works for me. And I, I, as a matter of fact, whatever I do, when I go on an audition, mm -hmm. you know, I pray to God first. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's my belief. So with that, it doesn't bother me. I don't think about not succeeding mm -hmm. or not selling a script or anything uh -huh. like that. That's, that. I don't even. I don't even think about it. You mean that. if I gave you $50 million, could you make me uh, 50 movies, or would you make me one $50 million? One $50 million. <laughs> that okay. doesn't make any difference. <laughs> yeah, I do my best. Yeah, uh -huh. I do my best. Right. But I, lo I, love, I love the writing. The writing has become therapeutic to me. As a matter, mm -hmm. I'm constantly telling young people to write. Mm -hmm. Because when you write, you can express yourself. A lot mm -hmm. of people can't express themselves vocally, but they can right. do it in letters. Right. You know, and you, you never realize... I've seen people write who are afraid to walk on stage, mm -hmm. but when they put it down on paper, you look and you go, wow, that's genius. Yeah, genius. but I mean, writing is a very cerebral uh, point. Yeah. And you have been such an active person as an entertainer. Uh, you, you do all these great voices and, <laughs> and uh, you're so animated. And I just, it, it's kind of difficult for me to see you uh, in your room, uh, <laughs> laboring over a couple of sentences, uh, uh, because I, I've seen you as, as this actor that, you know, just but no, no, I, But I love, I love what I do. I love show business. It's a business that I've chosen, for mm -hmm. better or for worse. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a little crazy, because you have to be crazy to go into a business with no, no uh, immediate future uh, mm -hmm. or nothing that's certain. Right. But I happen to love the business that I'm in. I know my responsibility to the business, to fans. I look at people who say, I'm not a role model, you know. And for years I used to, I used to listen to that and I say, well, you know, I'm not a role But I am a role model. Mm -hmm. The minute you put that cap on your head, you're a role model. Mm -hmm. The minute you walk out of that basketball court and bounce that ball, you're a role model. Uh -huh. When you put a baseball cap and walk out on that mound, you're a role model. That goes along with the territory. So morals are very important to me. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, I'm in a fishbowl. When you right. do a lot of television, you're, kids are emulating you. And mm -hmm. we're always talking about the kids. Don't expose the kids to this. Right. But the moral thing comes from inside first. Uh -huh. You know, I know we have the, 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 uh, the, the amendment that, you know, that protects people's rights or uh -huh. freedom of speech and right, everything. Right. And that's good. But, you know, as a human being, you got to go beyond that. Mm -hmm. You got to go beyond that. You got to have some more. You have to say to yourself, no, this is not good. Mm -hmm. You know, kids are watching this. I, I do not want kids to emulate me from a, from a negative point of view. Uh -huh. I wouldn't want that. Right. You know, I wouldn't want that. There's I so have, much of that going oh, absolutely, on these But days. nobody cares. But I have a conscience. I have to sleep yeah. at night. Right. <laughs> you know. So, and, but I mean, I love, I, I love what I do. And like I said, the writing has become therapy. Mm -hmm. You know, if I look like I'm going to have a bad day. I just take a pad and start writing. <laughs> and I just write everything. Uh -huh. I write everything. Um, you get certain people in the business that don't want to know that you can write everything. When you tell people, well, I can write everything, they go, oh, yeah, right, he's crazy. Mm -hmm. But in the confines of my home, I write whatever I want. Mm -hmm. Ain't anybody, nobody can stop me from writing mm -hmm. what I want. I'm writing a cookbook. I'm in the process of creating a board game, which I, I've completed right. that. It's just that I have to find the correct way to patent it right. so I don't lose it, so I haven't exposed it to anybody yet. 
Uh, there's does a your, other does your beautiful wife, June, uh, the, 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 does she, does she uh, have anything to say about your cookbook? Oh, that's, 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 my, that's my critic. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. Anything I write, it has to go through June. Hi, June. Hi, Sharon. Sharon's my daughter. <laughs> June's my wife. Jay right. is my... They, I say my little highs. Uh, Hi, Joyce. Joyce directed. That's his wife. We're good friends. <laughs> Hi, Aunt Juanita. Juanita is my surrogate mother. Right. She makes all my, my shirts for, for when I work in the nightclubs. Oh. And she's just always been there for me, mm -hmm. you know. But no, my wife, I mean, I, I run my, when I write a script, she reads it. Mm -hmm. My daughter reads it. Uh -huh. My son reads it. And they are very critical. They, they, they're probably more critical than I. No, they're not more critical. I'm my own worst critic because I shoot for perfection. Mm -hmm. And I will work on something until it's right. But isn't there a, a point? Well, you say, till it's right. But let's face it, uh, a writer in Hollywood is usually always rewritten. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But I don't let that bother me. Because uh -huh. at this point, I want to sell a screenplay. Mm -hmm. I want to, you know, so I can get a cushion. Uh -huh. Then, I mean, once I sell it, they can do what they want with it. I right, can care right, less right, once right. it's their property. Now, once I begin to write on a regular basis and I'm commissioned, then it's a different thing. Mm -hmm. But, no, I expect that. Mm -hmm. You see, I feel when you anticipate certain things in this business, mm -hmm. then you're not going to get your feelings hurt. I, at this point, even with the name that I've gained in this business, yes. um, I don't expect doors to open for me all the time. Mm -hmm. I go on auditions. I don't always get the job. Mm -hmm. But... I am aware of that. I have conditioned myself for rejection, uh -huh. which is for you young people out there. It's, that's number one thing. Condition yourself for rejection because you're not going to get everything you go out for. But how do you condition yourself for rejection? I mean, I'd like to know. Tell me. Teach me. <laughs> I'm, I'm rejected all the time. Well, we all are, but that's the thing that should keep us going. You know, it's like you, you're going to reject me, but you're not, you ain't going to turn me down every time. Mm -hmm. So that's the intensity I come with. I come and say, you're going to love me and you're going to hire me. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't happen, I don't go home and go crazy. I did that, mm -hmm. of course, when I first got into the business, I did that. We all did that. Mm -hmm. You went out on your first job and you went home, you couldn't sleep. You said, right. I know I'm going to get it. And the next day, you're waiting for the agent call. And right. You say, what happened? He said, somebody else got it. And you go crazy. Right. Well, after a while, you got to overcome that mm -hmm. and condition yourself for the rejection. If you don't, this business will drive you crazy. There's been so many stories of people in the business who've committed suicide because they mm -hmm. couldn't take it. But I don't, I, that couldn't happen to me because mm -hmm. I look at it this way. I worked a nine to five job before I ever got in the show business and I can always go back. I don't have any pride when it comes to working on mm -hmm. his work. Mm -hmm. So I can deal with that. You know, yeah. like I say, Hollywood's not going to kill me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Well, that's uh, really something that's very nice to hear. That well, it's the only way. I feel it's the only way to go with mm -hmm. what happens with the business. I mean, the business is constantly changing. Uh -huh. uh, if CBS or NBC or ABC, the major networks, if they have a bad year, yeah. then uh, heads are going to roll, and the next year there's a new administration. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know? So, right. I mean, these people can't really plan on anything. Right. That's another thing. Young people, when you get into this business, you get hot, save your money. <laughs> Put it aside. <laughs> what would you do if you ran uh, Hollywood? Say you were the czar. Well, I think what I would do, I would be compassionate to people who really have talent. Mm -hmm. uh, I know it's very difficult to read every script. Every, uh, it's very difficult for a record company to listen to every tape mm -hmm. of a song. But I think there should be certain committees in companies that uh, are set up to do this type of thing. Mm -hmm. Because... You know, it's amazing how many times somebody may throw away a good script mm -hmm. or a record company may throw away a good song uh -huh. or a company may throw away a good play and say, mm -hmm. oh, I haven't got time because they, they, I mean, they get bogged down in scripts. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a, a screenplay right now that's sitting in a major star's office and in uh -huh. a major company uh -huh. sitting in the office and it's in a pile. Right. Now, when they get to it, they'll uh -huh. get to it. Right, they'll read right, it. Right. But... I think if certain committees were set up to do this, somebody, that that was their job. Mm -hmm. And I realize they do. They just don't have enough people. ever right. create mm -hmm. more jobs for people mm -hmm. in the industry to really try to read every script. And I know it sounds ridiculous, mm -hmm. but 
if you toss out so many that you don't even take time to look at, mm -hmm. you know, right. uh, you're probably throwing something genius away. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it has happened. It has happened. I, I wish you were the czar of Hollywood yeah. so that... Uh, I would uh, probably work all of my friends. I would probably mm -hmm. give jobs to all my friends, mm -hmm. you know, if they were qualified to do it, right. of course. Right, you know? right. But I would love to be in the position to be able to say, uh, I, want, I want to do this film and I want Stanley directed to re direct it. Or I want Joyce to write it. Oh. I would love to be in that position. Uh -huh. It's a right. great position to be in, you know. You know, you know, I promised mm -hmm. myself when I had you on this show that I would ask you if you would do Sidney Poitier for me, kind of talking. And I don't think I'd do him that well. I, it's just that I'd work with him, and it's like I was explaining to you yeah. the type of director yeah. that Sidney was. He, he's not the type of guy to explode. He speaks mm -hmm. very quiet, you know, I mean, and he's just close to you, and nobody else can hear him. Mm -hmm. And when I was working to, with him, he would say to me things like, uh, Johnny Brown, now I want you to do this. When you're acting, I want you to play the role. Play yourself. Uh, you know? Uh, and I said, wow. Uh, I and, love it. And, and I was just in awe. As he's another person who I'm still in awe of. Uh -huh. I did a Broadway show with him. He directed me in a show. I did uh, a, several films with him. Mm -hmm. And all the years I've known him, I mm -hmm. still stand around and I gawk. Mm -hmm. I look at him. Like right. with Sammy. Sammy Chews. I knew Sammy over 30 years. And we worked in nightclubs, I, and I still stood in the wings every night, and he never ceased to amaze me. After all those years, it never ceased to amaze me. He never got thrown on stage. He was so much the professional on stage, and that he just could handle any situation. And those are the things that I learned from him. If the microphones went out, Sammy never panicked. Do you know we're wrapping up now? No, I, I didn't can't, know that. Yes, the time has fleeted <laughs> by. Kidding. I want to say thank and you. And you probably got a word I, in. Right. Well, hey, look, I love you. <laughs> well, we're going to have Brown? to do it again. It's going to have to be part two. That's right, part two. I want to <laughs> thank my wonderful guest, Mr. Johnny Brown, who, who we just hit the tip of the iceberg. And I want to thank my great audience out there for watching us. Keep watching us. And I'm going to keep talking to this gentleman over here. And he's so, going to have me back. Because uh, we got so much else to talk because about. Because I wanted to talk about uh, how you feel about, uh, say, uh, writing sitcoms yeah. as opposed to... Uh,